So the idea behind it for developing the system was to bring uh, birds to the optimal uh, body weight. So bring all birds together to the same body weight, so improve the uniformity of these birds. So that was the initial plan. Because in North America, we don't have as much uh, uh, grading as as wish we could do with those birds. So sometimes we have some problems with uniformity at the end of the rearing period. <laughs> Welcome to the another episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm your host, Dr. Pratima from Mississippi State University. Today we have a new um, guest in our episode. He is uh, Dr. Tiago Neutzold from University of Alberta, Calgary. Tiago, welcome to the program. Hi, Pratima. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Great, Tiago. Thanks for having. We're very glad. Thank, we're very glad to have you here. Um, uh, Tiago is a PhD candidate, uh, going to complete his uh, PhD program pretty soon from University of Alberta. He's in a very good group in the research lab there, and uh, uh, we try to dig in some more information on the precision feeding with the broiler breeders and maybe a little bit of laying hens if we have some time, right? Yes, that's right. Perfect. So can you tell us what are the, the some research that you are working on and that your lab is uh, have found or is there about any technology on the precision feeding of broiler breeder? Just a little bit about myself. I came from Brazil and I have a farm background. I work with broiler breeders in my master's. So that's why I was interested in working with broiler breeders in my PhD. And then uh, coming to University of Alberta, uh, I started working with the precision feeding system that was initially developed for broiler breeders. So the idea behind it for developing the system was to bring uh, birds to the optimal uh, body weight. So bring all birds together to the same body weight, so improve the uniformity of these birds. So that was the initial plan. Because in North America, we don't have as much uh, uh, grading as as wish we could do with those birds so sometimes we have some problems with uniformity at the end of the rearing period so the basically the system was initially developed for that and who developed the system was martin zuidoff right so that was the initial plan for the system right and we were successful with that so we are, we achieved like 100 percent uniformity at the time of photostimulation of broiler breeders but we learned a lot of other things about the uh, the birds with that too because the, what the system does is that we feed birds several times in a day. So they are fed based on their body weights. So every time the, bo uh, the bird goes into the system, based on the body weight uh, target that we have for the broiler breeders, um, basically we, uh, we allow them to have a meal or be removed from the system. And they have another chance to go to the... Uh, to the feeding line and try to go inside of the feeding station again and receive a meal. So that's a very uh, a short summary of the how the system works. And one of the things that we learn is that when we feed those birds several times in a day, we kind of increase their leanness. So those birds they deposit less fat, and with that we observe that uh, we had some problems even with the birds that were on target from their recommended breeder target, they were uh, having problems to initiate sexual maturation, but mainly because those birds were uh, were leaner. Oh, that's a very cool finding there. Um, I, I'm sure we're going to be benefited with this information about the breeder feeding uh, side of it. Um, that's very good uh, to know about what you guys are doing. A little bit curiosity out of here about, do you, um, I know there are some feeding technique. Uh, we don't care a lot about male breeders, but um, do you have anything to add on, on the feeding and the male side of it? Yes. So the initial plan of the precision feeding system was to uh, get the 100% uniformity for the females, and then we, we were successful with that, but then we saw it was a challenge for them to lay eggs because of their uh, lower fat deposition. Yeah. And one thing that we have seen consistently is the male uh, side of it. So we also fed the males mm -hmm. and the fertility was very good uh, with the precision feeding and males and females. But uh, we think that is mostly because of the uniformity of these males. So we were able to keep the uniformity very high within the males as well. 
Yeah. Uh, so every time we have trials, we feed both females and males with the precision feeding system. And then we, we've seen uh, consistently that the males uh, have a very good uniformity. So uh, CV around 1% or less than 1% at the time of auto-stimulation. So that's very good. That's pretty good. And we saw a very, very high, uh, we saw a higher uh, fertility when we compared to the conventional feeding system. And basically, on, based on that, I think for, let's say, a commercial plan for this precision feeding system, our first approach will be with the meals, especially because in a barn, you the amount of meals that you have is lower than the females. So for the producer, it's easier to adopt that as well. So you don't have to change all your feeding lines, only your meals. And the fertility, uh, it's a great, uh, it's an important part because you need to have, that's the objective of the breeders, right? So you need to get chicks out of them. Right. So that would be one of the uh, one of the advantage of using the system or the plan for the commercial uh, the commercial part of this uh, this new technology. And the other one would be that nowadays it's been challenging to uh, manage those meals. Uh, when we talk about that, especially here in Canada, at least, but I, I'm assuming the U.S. too. Right. It's been very hard to maintain their uniformity to maintain the. Uh, the fertility, especially towards the end of the laying cycle. Right. So that's another that's another opportunity there to try to implement this system. Kemen calls all poultry experts. You already know the key to a profitable operation is healthy, productive birds. Our team of poultry experts are driven by curiosity to develop science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash poultry to learn more. No, I agree. Going towards this uniformity and then fertility side by side is not it's not an easy job, especially your talking about these uh, parent flocks or I mean the breeder flocks that are going to give us a possible of a future good broiler chicks so there you can imagine a lot of fat deposition is not a good thing and then also you want to make sure they reproduce well because you need fat for reproduction and I can I can see this challenge in the industry and I know we have done a lot of good job here and we cannot complain but I think there is we can do a much precise and that's what you your lab is working on and I I really appreciate, we really appreciate this work. Um, uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about the technology. So are you talking about looking at data once you collect the data or is the technology that you apply to the farm level? Yeah, so as a research tool, the precision feeding is really great. You have a huge amount of data uh, yeah. to work on and that gives you a lot of information about the birds. So that's a great side, of, a really good side of it. And uh, so... One of the plans, too, from our research group, so from uh, Dr. Zuidoff here at Universal Alberta, would be to explore this technology to other uh, universities so we'll be able to collect uh, high-quality data as well. Yeah. And the other part would be trying to get this technology to uh, to farms. And I think that's a slow process, right? But that would, uh, I think initially would happen with uh, the meal yeah. uh, in broiler breeder barns first and then maybe in the future with females uh, uh, that might be adopted as well. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I really like this idea of managing first and then going this nutrition side by side. What do you have to do with the breeders and even the layer, right? You are talking about this different management of feeding system and not only that this, we have a lighting system, we have a barn system, we have environment. And then we have to handle this bar very gently at the same time. And then you were talking about the other things like a nutrition was another major part of it. And again, talking about a nutrition, the broader breeder, again, we're going to we're going to have to have another episode to talk about it. Right. I saw some work on that dress minerals feeding in the broader breeder and maybe some in laying hands, too. So, yes. Uh, is that OK with you to share another time? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. And this is our program that is uh, by Wise Genetics. Um, I'm your host, Dr. Pratima Adatori. We had a PhD candidate in our show today, um, Mr. Dr. Tiago. Um, so I'm sure, Tiago, we're going to cross paths in the future since our research is kind of a little similar. Um, so thank you so much for your knowledge on the breeder management. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Well, thank you. Looking forward for the next one. <laughs>